So uh, before that, let me talk about the definition of a group. So let me denote uh, D is a set of 1, 1 and onto transformations. from sample space chi to chi itself. Now, those who have done even a very basic course in modern algebra, they know when a group of transformation or group of operation is called a group. So, G is called a group, a group of transformations. if the following conditions hold. So, what are the conditions uh, uh, that should hold? The first test condition is there should be a identity map in G. So, that means there exists a transformation E in G, which is a identity transformation. So, that means such that E of x is same as x for every x belonging to i. Now, these also cause call the existence of identity transformation. Second says uh, my G should be closed under composition. That means, if G 1 and G 2 are two transformations in G, composition of G 1 and G 2 should also be in Z. So, if G 1 and G 2 belongs to G, that should imply that G 1 composition G 2 should it also belong to G. The third property is that for every transformation in G, I should have a inverse transformation such that G inverse G is an identity map. So, for every G belonging to G, there exists a transformation, you can call this as G star, such that G star composition G is nothing but identity. Now, we know we denote this G star by G inverse and call this as a inverse transformation. So, we denote G star by G inverse and we call this as inverse transformation. So, let us quickly consider a few examples of a uh, uh, group of uh, transformation. So, the first uh, group of transformation could be multiplicative group. So, my sample space uh, chi could be R or chi to infinity. My group of transformations uh, could be in the case of uh, uh, R, it could be G of C such that C belongs to R minus 0. I will tell what G C is or in this case Again, I can put it as G C C belonging to in this case would be 0 to infinity. And what is my G C x? G C x is nothing but mod C times 
mod c times x. In this case, g c x could be c times x. So, this is mod c times. Now, one can check this is group of transformations. Why? What is the identity map in the each of the case? C is equal to 1. So, E x identity map is nothing but so E x is nothing but G 1 x in either either of the case because G 1 x is nothing but mod of 1 x which is same as x G 1 x is same as x. So, there is a all the boxes. Now, let us look at composition if G c 1 and G c 2 are in x. So, let us look at G c 1 composition G c 2 x. What is the, that? G c 2 x is nothing but mod c 2 x and then G c 1 of mod c 2 x is there is a mod of c 1 mod of c 2 x and which is nothing but mod of c 1 c 2 x and mod c 1 c 2 x is again a transformation of the type mod of something time x and what is the mod of something that is same as mod of c 1 c 2. So, this is same as g of c 1 c 2 x and you know that since c 1 is non 0 c 2 is non 0 c 1 c 2 is non 0. So, this clearly belongs to t. Similarly, in this case there would have not been any mod it would have been without mod c 1 into c 2 x which is same as c 1 c 2 x which would be again g c 1 c 2 x. So, it is again closed under compositions. What should be the inverse? So, if g c x is in this what should be its inverse? So, I put g c x is equal to y. So, this is mod of c x equal to y that means x is nothing but y times mod of c. So, this would be nothing but x times mod of c. So, you can see what is the g c inverse of g c x? This is nothing but g c inverse of mod c x. So, g c inverse of mod c x and g c inverse of some quantity is nothing but that quantity divided by mod of c. So, mod of c x divided by mod of c which is x. So, this is a inverse transformation. Similarly, in this case the same thing would follow except that there will not be any mod over there. So, you see that this is a group of transformations. Now, similarly you can have an additive group of transformations. So, additive group uh, could be again let us say my chi could be whole r. I consider g as collection of all those g c such that c belongs to r and what is my g c x? x plus c additive means this c gets added. So, you can see what would be the identity map? Identity map which gives me which maps x to x x to x would be mapped only for c is equal to 0 and 0 is in real line. So, E x is nothing but G 0 x. So, there is an identity map which is nothing but G 0 x which is G x equal to x. Now, if I look at G c 1 composition G c 2 x what would be that quantity? That would be nothing but G c 1 of what is the G c 2 x? x plus c 2 and what would be 
G C one of X plus C two. So just add C one to the argument. That is what G C X is. G C S is to the argument add whatever C is over here. So here argument is X plus C two. I have to add just C one. So this is becomes X plus C one plus C two. But what is this? This can be written as G of C one plus C two. Now, since C one was in R, because G C one and G C two both were in G, so that means C one and C two both were in R. So, if C one C two is in R, C one plus C two is in R. So, this clearly belongs to G. And what will be the inverse transformation? So, G C inverse X is nothing but you put x plus c is equal to y, so x becomes y minus c. So g c inverse x is nothing but x minus c. And you can see g c of g c inverse x is nothing but g c of x minus c, g c of x minus c is nothing but x minus c plus c, which is x. So that which you get at identity transformation. So this is the inverse transformation, and this clearly belongs to t. So there is an inverse transformation. If two transformations are there, their composition is there, and identity transformation is there. So it is a group of transformation. Now, third important group of transformation is called the affine group. So G. So here again, my sample space could be whole R. G could be GBC, where B is between minus infinity to infinity, C is positive. Or my G could also be, there is no need to take C to be positive. It would be GBC, says that b is between minus infinity to infinity and c is not equal to 0. As it was happening in the scale case, multiplicative case. And how do you define uh, uh, GBC? In the first case, you can define just simply Cx plus b. In the second case, you can put a mod over there, mod of Cx plus b. Now, by the same logic, you can show the identity map. What with identity map? How do you get x? You get x by putting c is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. So, my identity transformation is nothing but g 0 I have to see whether G01 is in G. G01 means my B0 should be in any real number, which is happening, and 1 should be positive, so 1 is positive. So this is always there in G. So there is identity map. Of course, what would be the inverse transformation? So Cx plus B is equal to y, that means x is nothing but y minus b by c or y minus b upon mod c. So, y minus b by c, sorry, x minus b by c. So, which is same as g of uh, g inverse of minus b by c, comma 1 by c. Why? Because this can be written as 1 by c into x plus minus b by c. So, which is again of the type d x plus e, where d is 1 upon c. So, this is the same as g inverse of b is in r. So, minus b is in r. c is positive. So, this is anything in r. So, that was the first argument. So, first argument is anything in r. c was positive. So, 1 by c is positive. So, this belongs to g. So, there is an inverse element. So, this is also a group of transformations. So, these are 
three different group of transformation. Uh, one can uh, consider another group of transformation which is called the permutation group. So, uh, uh, as the name suggests, it talks about permutations. So, my sample space could be chi naught class chi naught, where chi naught is some subset of R, subset of R. So, how do we define? So, what I do is I consider G as collection of all those alpha such that alpha belongs to S n. What is S n? It is set of permutations of of integers 1 to n. So, the subscript here G alpha alpha would be 1 some of the permutations of one to n. For example, if n was 2, this will have a two elements g 1 2 and g 2 1. If n was 3, this will have a six element g 1 2 3, g 2 1 3 and these are different transformations. And how do you define g alpha x? So, it just permutes these arguments permutes x 1 x 2 x n. So, it only says g alpha x 1 x 2 x n is whatever this permutation is permute them corresponding to. Now, the question is, is this a group of transformations? So, first of all identity map what should be E of x? E of x, I should get only x 1, x 2, x n. So, that means, my alpha 1 should be 1, alpha n should be 1. So, this is nothing but G of 1 x, where what is the vector 1? Vector 1 is 1, 2, What is uh, G alpha inverse x? G alpha inverse x should be such that if you apply G alpha inverse on this, I should get 1. So, if what it says is you consider inverse transformation, inverse permutation of alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n and apply that. So, this would be x alpha 1 inverse x alpha n where alpha 1 inverse alpha n inverse is an inverse permutation of Now, certainly, if alpha 1 and alpha 2 are two permutations, then what would be g alpha 1 alpha 2 x? Let us try to see that. What does g alpha 2 x does? g alpha 2 x would be nothing but x of alpha 2, x of uh, alpha 2 1, alpha 2, or let me put it g of alpha beta, so that where alpha and beta are two permutations of 1 to n. So, G beta x, what does it is? It permutes x 1, x 2, x n, that is what G beta does. So, with this, I get some permutation of x 1, x 2, x n. What does G alpha does? It further permutes. So, permutation of a permutation is again a permutation. So, this would be some permutation of x 1, x 2, x n. And I know that if any transformation which just permutes x to one of its permutations that is clearly in G. 
So here suddenly first and third were easy. Now to get an insight of uh, the inverse, how does inverse work, let us look at n is equal to 2. n is equal to 2, there are only two permutations. So there is a permutation 1, which is 1, 2, and there is a permutation alpha 2. So let me call this as, this is alpha permutation, this is beta permutation, which is 2. What is alpha? So, what does uh, uh, alpha does? Alpha takes 1, 2 to 1, 2. This is what alpha permutation is. So, what is alpha inverse? Alpha inverse I take where, where does 1 go? So, 1 is inverse image is 1, 2, so alpha inverse is 1, 2, 1. What happens in the beta case? Beta case 1, 2 goes to 2, 1. So, what is the beta inverse? I look at the inverse image of 1, which is nothing but 2, and what is the inverse image of 2? That is 1. So, inverse image of the first component is second, inverse image of the second component is first, so that is 2. Now, if you want to see what is g beta inverse g beta x, so that is nothing but g beta inverse of x beta 1, x beta 2, so x 2, x 1. But beta inverse is nothing but 1 and 2 only, because second component is x 1 and 10 is 2. Similarly, you can see for n is equal to 3. So, this was uh, all about a uh, group of transformations. So, let me take a, a break over here and then what I will do um, is now I will talk about when do I say a set of probability distributions is invariant under a group of transformations. So, that is what uh, we will do next.